the portrait of a lady written by kushwant singh kushwant singh was an indian novelist lawyer journalist and politician As a writer he was best known for his trenchant secularism humor sarcasm and an abiding love for poetry In this story the author draws a pen portrait of his grandmother It is his insight about her through his own eyes he beautifully unfolds his relationship with her while describing her appearance and daily activities the first stage of the story talks about the appearance of the grandmother Kushwant lived in a village with his grandmother as his parents were looking for a chance to settle down in the city She woke him up helped him get ready coated his wooden slate prepared his breakfast and accompanied him to school they fed street dogs with stale chapatis on their way which was a great fun for them She took care of all his needs. She was quite dynamic and active. She helped him in his lessons also. During this period, she was the exclusive, undisputed custodian, mentor and architect of Kushwant. He remembers her as an everlastingly old person, a very old lady with a wrinkled face. It is difficult for him to conceptualize that she too had been young and pretty once like other women. She appeared so old that it was hard for him to believe that she had once been young and pretty. The stories about her childhood games were like fairy tales to him. The reason was that he had always seen her as an old lady. She was short, fat, and a little stooped in appearance. Her silvery white hair used to spread out on her wrinkled face. She was also an extremely religious person. The author remembers her limping around the house in spotless white with one hand resting on her waist to balance her stoop and the other busy in telling the beads of the rosary while her lips 
moved constantly in silent prayers. She was not pretty in the traditional sense, yet her serenity made her beautiful. Perhaps she was not beautiful in a temporal sense, but she looked extremely beautiful with the peacefulness, calm and contentment that her face reflected, her inner beauty. The second stage of their relationship, turning point of their friendship, life in the city. The turning point of their friendship came when they moved to the city to stay with the author's parents. Though they shared the same room, his grandmother no longer accompanied him to the school since he started travelling by a bus. As years rolled by, they saw less of each other as Kushwan got busy with his studies and he hardly had any time to spend with her. Her role in his upbringing greatly reduced as she could not accompany him to the school and was able to spend very less time with him. There were no dogs in the streets, so she took to feeding the sparrows. This daily activity helped in combating her loneliness. In spite of her immense interest in his studies, she could not help him in his lessons as he was learning English, laws of gravity, Archimedes principles and many more such things which she was unable to understand and this distressed her. Unlike the village school, the author was not taught about God and the scriptures which troubled her immensely. She did not have faith in what was being taught in the school and felt unhappy about it. Moreover, she was disturbed at the idea of music lessons being given at school as she considered music to be unsuitable for gentlefolk. It was meant for beggars and prostitutes only. Her disapproval and disdain was reflected in her silence. When the author started going to the university, he was given a room of his own. It resulted in a further gap between them. At this point, she accepted her loneliness and rarely spoke to anyone at all. She was dismayed and withdrew herself to some extent. Perhaps she had realized that her prominence in molding her grandson had diminished and this very thought affected her 
gravely. But she was a very firm person with immense self-control. She always refrained from showing her emotions and kept to herself whatever she felt in her heart. In the next part of the story, the author leaves for higher studies. When the author decided to go abroad for further studies, he was sure that his grandmother would be upset at his departure. This was the stage when she found herself altogether secluded and lonely, but she tolerated this growing distance with grace and self-respect. All day long she sat spinning the wheel and reciting her prayers. She relaxed for a short time only in the afternoon to feed the sparrows that came in large numbers. The bond and the level of comfort they shared with her is evident in the fact that they perched on her legs and head also. She used to be at her happiest self while feeding them. She was a kind-hearted person. In the village, she used to feed street dogs and in the city, she made friends with birds. They too became very friendly with her. She came to the railway station to see him off but did not show that she was upset. She was absorbed in her prayers telling the beads of her rosary. She silently kissed his forehead, which the author thought could be the last of their physical contact. He thought so because she was very old and may not survive till he completed his education and came back to his home. The next stage of the story is the author's homecoming. When the author returned after five years, he did not find any change in his grandmother. He found her even more religious and self-possessed than earlier. She spent a lot of time in prayers and in spinning the wheel. She was as old as ever and remained absorbed in her prayers. Even on the day of his return, she did not give up feeding the sparrows, which was her religiously followed routine since many years. Feeding the sparrows was her only happy activity of the day. But just the day before her death, 
for the first time in so many years she broke this routine and abandoned her prayers in the evening for the first time ever she did not pray she collected several ladies of the neighborhood and sang songs related to the homecoming of warriors she had to be persuaded to stop singing in order to avoid over straining however the next day she was taken ill the next stage is grandmother's death Though diagnosed with a mild fever by the doctor, grandmother knew that her end was near. She decided to spend the last few hours of her life reciting prayers and telling the beads of her rosary. She did not want to waste any more time talking to anybody. She was distressed that she had neglected her prayers just before the final exit from the world. She lay peacefully in bed constantly praying and telling the beads till her lips stopped moving and the rosary fell from her lifeless fingers No one around her realized the time when she left for her heavenly abode In the last stage of the story a silent tribute is paid to the grandmother by the sparrows After grandmother's death the family started making arrangements for her funeral When they entered the house with a stretcher they had to stop midway to find thousands of sparrows scattered around her dead body The sparrows flew in to mourn her death and sat around her body in complete silence They flew away silently after the body was taken away for cremation. They even disregarded the bread crumbs thrown for them by Kushwant's mother. The bread crumbs were swept away by the sweeper the following morning. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.